Hi guys, first and foremost I want to say a huge thank you for all the incredible feedback I got on my first photography conversation with Nigel Danson. Now I am a little bit worried that when I don't have Nigel's face to help me promote this concept that uh, it might fall apart. So it's very much up to you uh, if you actually do enjoy these conversations to, to watch the video and watch the entire video because this one here is really, really good. It's a long talk I had with my good friend uh, Kai Hornung. But uh, yeah, I, I've tried to incorporate a little bit of the critique I got on the first conversation and uh, try to make it a little bit more entertaining throughout the entire video. I show way more photos, so there's something to look at if you so decide to look at it. But it is a format that is still designed for you to just listen to it while editing a photo or doing something else. So without further ado, here's Kai. All right, so uh, welcome Kai. This is actually our second attempt. We had a little bit <laughs> of a, a problem with the camera that didn't record. So we lost like half of the interview. Uh, but we'll just do it all over again. It's it's a you're a nice guy to hang out with. Yes, same with you. <laughs> yeah. So Kai and I we uh, we go some years back. We have been uh, both in the Dolomites together, and we have been to the Faroe Islands together. We are hanging out in our own little chat group with uh, eight-ish other people. Not all of them are equally active, but uh, we are like a little small community uh, and, and we just help each other with image reviews and so forth. We've been doing this for, I don't know, what is it now? Four years ish. Yeah, I think so. I think it's four years. Yeah. Yeah. So we have kind of come from the same place. Like we, we, most of us saw the F stubbers tutorial uh, with Elia Locati uh, and, and we were in, in that group and then we kind of like got together in one of those uh, infamous Instagram pods, uh, engagement pods. Feels but like forever it, ago, doesn't it? it really, <laughs> really, yeah. But uh, yeah, Instagram very, very fast uh, closed that down. So uh, yeah, but we just uh, kept hanging out and, and helping each other out. Uh, one or two new people have uh, joined since, but it's it's really nice because it gives so much to our pictures that we can really just like review, you know, you have seen your picture, you think it's done, then you put it in and some person just tear it apart. And you see a lot of things that, <laughs> yeah, you see a lot of things that you didn't see yourself. And it just like elevates your picture to that next level to have someone else critiquing it. So yeah, Kai, a little bit about you. Who are you? Where do you live? And uh, yeah, all those things. Oh yeah. Uh, so first of all, uh, thank you for getting me onto your little show. Um, well, my name is Kai Hornung and I'm a landscape photog photographer from Hanover, Germany, as you might tell from my accent. And it was 2016 that I started to photograph landscapes. Um, I had picked up a camera before, but it was just to document family travels and uh, my kids. My son was born in 2008. And that was the time when I got myself a, uh, a DSLR, an entry uh, camera, to um, switch lenses the first time and to uh, try to shoot him, photograph him, <laughs> to be exact. And then in 2016, I went on a business trip to uh, Ireland. And that was the first time I actually looked up when sunset will be and where to stand, which would be a nice place to go. And that was such a fantastic experience that I fell in love with landscape photography right away and never looked back. And uh, since then, uh, really spent so many hours, maybe more than 10,000. I don't know if that's, if that's doable in that span of time, but it's been uh, many, many hours in front of the computer, editing images and also shooting. And yeah, it's uh, even made it to be a side job for me now. That's so awesome to hear. So obviously uh, it goes without saying that you should go and watch Kai's homepage and uh, follow him on Instagram because he is <laughs> such a great photographer. Oh, thank you. Um, and I get a lot of input from him too. Uh, so I also learn a lot from our friendship. 
So Kai, we have kind of like evolved together and we both love the epic vistas uh, and, and we are both still there, but uh, you have kind of also evolved into another direction. So can you tell a little bit more about that? Mm -hmm. I think we've, we both started where most people probably do. Um, when you go into a landscape, you shoot wide mostly in the beginning. And um, I, I still like taking those pictures of those wide vistas, just like you said, but um, I fell in love more and more with shooting more intimate scenes, more abstract stuff, um, excluding the sky on purpose and um, making it a bit, a bit more location independent, what, what's shown on my images. And um, I find it highly satisfying to isolate uh, small scenes, patterns, structures, something like that, um, out of the chaos that surrounds us in our environment. And um, I like to, th to mix things up. Uh, just last night, I uh, released a series, the first time actually, that I put together um, several shots, um, which only make sense together probably. Uh, it's just tiny ripples on a lake. Uh, Funny enough, I mean, we went there together, remember, 2017 I on Königsee? And we went across that lake with a boat. It was all silent and there was fog everywhere. You couldn't even see the mountains, which are huge there, and didn't even see the end of the lake because there was just dense fog. And there were tiny ripples on the water. And uh, I just enjoyed photographing that. And uh, those are those kind, uh, small, intimate scenes that I really fell in love with and that I uh, am interested in shooting more and more. The Vistas so, and that stuff equally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, I, I saw your series and it's really, really beautiful. It's so calm uh, and wa watery. Uh, yeah, it's called ca <laughs> yeah, calm waters. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So so what is it um, you, you look for in your photography? What is it you, you try to to yeah find in your photography and what is it you want to like tell with your photography and and all those things is there like a common goal this is where kai hornung is is going when he goes out into nature what is it you're looking for first of all when i'm outside in a landscape i try to get a feeling for my surrounding and, and get emotionally connected um which is most of the time it happens very easily because the places we both are really blessed to go to are just absolutely beautiful. So it's really easy to connect with. But even if it's not such a beautiful big scene, there's um, I take my time to slow down, which is something I really, really like because my everyday life usually is pretty busy. So uh, just calming down and enjoying the environment, get a connection, get an emotional feeling. That's something that I try to do. And that's also something that I try to display inside of my images, that certain feel, a certain emotion. Uh, that's what I try to uh, bring across with my imagery. Yeah. yeah. You have a background in music. You write your own songs, you sing your own songs, you've been in a band for very long. <clears throat> Do you see some kind of uh, connection or, or, or something that you can use in your background in, in that artistic background in music that you can move into your landscape photography? Yeah, I think I can. Um, I mean, as I've proven to you with our first recording, um, I could improve my technical skills. Uh, <laughs> so the same, same with music, uh, just ask my bandmates. Uh, I'm not the one that's setting up the microphone and get everything wired for a high-end recording. Um, it's never been about techniques for me, uh, and not with photography uh, either. So, but with music, um, it's also getting a feeling. And um, there's a coincidence maybe, when I started writing lyrics and started writing our own songs with my bands, um, I've always had some kind of image in my mind, um, something not maybe even that distinct more maybe colors, shapes, sometimes a landscape or a thing, um, and try to work through this with the vocal lines and also the lyrics. And um, so maybe it's even happening naturally now that this visual side has become even more and more important. And now, of course, is the main thing with photography. So uh, I would say there's a 
a huge connection actually and um, trying to get a feeling trying to get images seeing yeah, yeah. That, that, that's it I, I think mm -hmm. yeah yeah have, have I, I have to ask have you written any songs about landscape photography <laughs> no not yet no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember I wrote some lyrics about uh, some things like that but um, so far I, I don't think my band members even know much about my photography and they don't really care that much either so it's just it's at the moment it's more separate things there might be some things woven together in the future i don't know that that will just come up maybe or doesn't i don't know yeah yeah <laughs> okay good so i i was thinking because we, we see today like a lot of photos are being taken uh, more photos are being taken today than any past time in, in history and i think it's the same with music uh, being creative with both the visual uh, art arts and the auditorial arts i'm not sure that's the word in english um is, is easier than ever and and everybody can basically have has it as a hobby and and release their stuff um well, but to, to take music and photography to that next level we can definitely see a radio hit is usually fairly easily digestible and and you catch the melody rather fast and i think i see the same in photography that the photos that are popular uh, on a mass scale so that's usually on social media are usually also fairly digestible um, you you rarely see a very popular photo which is like very moody lacks contrast and and that there might be some deeper thoughts about it it's usually the big epic colorful landscapes with a, a certain composition and usually from some of the famous locations that we know of like Kirkeville in Iceland, Skorfoss and Hamnoy in, in Lofoten um do do you see the same thing like do do you aim for in your, your musical career and in in your landscape photography something which is easily digestible or do you want to write symphonies or something that you you, you don't really need uh, to cater to a mass audience i've never been that very interested in chart music maybe to start with or may I, I as a kid maybe but um now since i'm a teacher teenager i haven't been anymore uh so if you would compare it maybe you could see the charts and music with what's doing well on instagram i think that might be a, a correlation um it's it's not so easy i mean there's there's great pop music um for example sia I think she's she's amazing, amazing artist and amazing singer. So uh, there can be great pop music um, that's really um, uh, new and ambitious and um, really gets you moving and is interesting even for musicians to listen to. And um, it's also with with images that can be a, a easy, easily digestible image, which still really is has an awesome moment captured great conditions very well done thought through maybe thought through even more than you would think at first sight and um can be the same with music but um if you ask me what is it that i aspire um to create to be to be creative and do stuff that i like myself without even asking myself is this very ambitious now is this is this uh, highly intellectual um that, no I, I just want to um feel a sense of satisfaction while creating and when, when i'm finished creating this and you might you might know this feeling sometimes you you are never really finished creating you just you're at a certain point and you think ah, this i could still work this out and, and sometimes you just have to let things go okay but um, just like with this uh, water series, um, I was so sat satisfied when I had this finished because it, it was a lot of work to have images really cohesive next to each other and, and work together as a set, with a set being more important than the, the image itself. Um, 
that was highly satisfying and um, much more satisfying than having a chart uh, position or whatever or a, a like count on Instagram. So um, me personally, I would say I, I don't really think in those categories. I, I remember in the music days um, when, when, you, when you are in an alternative band and I've been in a, an alternative rock bands or even metal bands, you're like uh, you're scared away by having it sound too poppy or too flashy or whatever, and it has to be underground and stuff like that. But man, that's that's exhausting when you try to be in your own niche somehow. It's just much freer when you're when you enjoy creating and you just in the end you you just you just look up and see, well, where am I now? Is that a niche? I don't care. Is, is it good? That I, Do I like it myself? And if that answer is yes, I think then you're on the right track. And that's that's where I like to go, yeah. Yeah, yeah Long it, answer. it sounds very <laughs> much to me like, you know, that flow chart yeah, where, exactly. where, you, where you really try to go into the flow zone of creativity and then you just see wherever you end up. And that's the best feeling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That that That's really what I also try to do and and when when you look down through my portfolio like i have the moody more calm something you can like put a, a deeper meaning into but i obviously also have my very like you know direct epic landscape photos and there's not really like you know a deeper connection to it and and i think being able to play on a lot of uh, is it called tangents in English? <laughs> you you can play like you have a broad spectrum of photography that you can actually do, and you connect with yourself. That is uh, that's important. I there are of course in these days because I I can feel on myself sometimes that I am I'm producing so many photos and photos that I for the most part are pretty happy about. But if I was to take out all the photos that I had like that really deep five star connection with there's a lot of photos that would just like poof, go out of both my Instagram and my portfolio and and so forth and I think it's uh, it's hard to like demand of photographers that they only release their best best uh, photography um, because some of it, like, I like it, and then some other people connect even more with it uh, than I myself do. And I have plenty of those photos that I'm like, okay, they're fine. I don't mind them being associated with me, but other people really, really enjoy them. And the best part is when, when those people reach out to you and yes. explain their connection with your image, and you get to think, like, well, I didn't even see this inside this image myself but it's so cool now that somebody like points this out to me and um i find great joy in that too also with lyrics when, when i write lyrics they're mostly rather vague uh, and, and more open to interpretation and when somebody says well you know i i feel a connection with that because of that and that what i experienced myself i think that's so great because uh as an artist and i take so much inspiration out of other people's work like your work for example can be a tiny thing but uh, something that i pick up and think cool that's an idea and i try something else even if my image looks completely else uh, uh, completely different um it's still such a great thing to be inspired and get that spark and uh, sometimes people take it further than the artist itself really meant it to be and i like that too yeah, it's it, it's really drawing inspiration from each other. It was like what what, what we talked about actually in, in the last interview. Yeah. That we we just take small tits and bits from each other. Like we don't go in and copy each other one to one, but there's like tits and bits that we we connect with, and then we kind of like remember that and and put it into our own photography. And uh, yeah, then we just draw inspiration from each other and keep being creative, and that kind of like gives a sense of purpose, I guess, to to the entire thing here with with landscape photography. I, I I guess yeah, it's probably the same in music. Like you hear something that rings with you, and then you go on with it. It's when we um, when we tried to do this interview before, uh, I, I 
had a quote in mind uh, from uh, Bono from U2, which is actually kind of fitting. Um, and it says, uh, every, um, every artist is a thief, or uh, every uh, artist is a cannibal, every poet is a thief from that uh, th uh, song, The Fly. And I think that really perfectly sums it up. It's, um, we, we feed from each other and um, it's great when you take things further and do your own spin with, on it. So, um, I mean, in music, there's cover versions and sometimes a cover version can even be uh, a bit nicer to hear than the original one. Um, actually, I would, I would like to see that more in uh, photography that, that artists would do actual cover versions by crediting the original artist. In photography, yes. it's more like uh, I take this thing and I make it my own. Although most people know, nah, it was maybe I don't know a Daniel Corden or Mark Adams or whoever who did that first. So maybe some photographers should be more open to giving credit and saying, "Well, I was inspired here, and I I tried to take my own spin." I, th I th that would be a cool thing. Yeah, it's quite it's quite fun. I think it was actually Gavin Hardcastle I heard on a podcast like half a year ago or something like that. He he mentioned that, it, and that's that's very true. That when we go out and take photos at popular locations like Kirchhoffel and Hamnoy and all those things, like in many ways, I completely agree that it is like we make up our own cover versions of that place that that shot because it's hard to argue that our compositions are uh, original when we plant our tripod exactly where everybody else is standing and we have that waterfall there and we have the mountain in the background and rule of thirds and all those things and the only thing that is actually different is the weather conditions and a little bit of how we edit it so uh, yes it would be nice to credit the original person who did that the very first time but uh, I, I'm, I have no clue who was the yeah, first to take that, the that's picture true, from that's true yeah. Yeah, I mean there, there's some, some spots like Hanoi Bridge um, just out of the given um, place you, you can't do so many different things from up that bridge uh, I remember with my shot I tried to make sure that the rocks and the water were um, inside the frame which m many images that I see don't have it like that but um, if that's an original spin, spin, I don't know. With those places, it's hard. Still, but I, I think I'm the same like you. I, I don't walk around to those spots and have like my smartphone in my hand and look look up uh, how was that composed and how do I have to set up my tripod now. Um, I don't work that way. Uh, I mean, I look up spots sometimes where to go to, just like the the trip to the US that we had planned before the virus happened. Um, of course, I was looking up places and I read books. I went through blog articles. I went through YouTube videos, videos and mostly on Google um, image search because there you have images that are unedited and look more realistic and to kind of get a feeling if a place would be interesting to shoot. And once I'm there, I don't care about any other images. I try to get a feel for the, the place myself and take images that are interesting and intriguing to, for me. Sometimes you end up doing the same stuff that others did, of course, and sometimes you maybe get a different spin like uh, not so many other people I've seen so far. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, of course, in, in the beginning, like when I went to Iceland for the first time, I had that same feeling as, as you did. You go to another country, you start taking <clears throat> landscape photos. And, and you're just like, whoa, this is amazing. You feel like you have advanced a level. You you kind of know like basic editing. And, and then you actually go out and, and use it in a practical way. You go out and, and try long exposures and you are in all these locations. And of course you frame this specific composition as it is, as you've seen it. And for me, it has usually been that I also want to make something which is kind of original either do that through the editing uh, or it would or be boring if not right what did you say it would be boring if not right exactly of course you don't want to go out and just copy it um but but there are definitely photos where i've been like whoa i wish that was my photo but obviously you can never make that photo because the weather conditions always change and even if i was to you know edit my own photo the same photo twice the always end up actually 
surprisingly different <laughs> and that's and, uh, that, and, that's and now so you have weird. a feeling why editing those calm water shots for me that was really a mighty task to have a really cohesive editing and cohesive look with those images that they look like they don't look much edited but i, I did a lot of color work and contrast work and everything and to have just five to seven images look like they're exactly taken from the same moment same light atmosphere color uh theme and everything that's not so easy i mean there's things in, in photoshop you can uh, use but still it's you have to tweak that and i was running back and forth from my screen and like looking to next to each other and i was like ah, does it look uh, cohesive and everything and it was a lot of work and so highly satisfying to have that finished really yeah yeah it's uh i, I was just editing some of my ice beach photos here in in, in the morning and just getting the tonality between them the same the black levels and and so forth like you have to eyeball it again and again move away do something else go back to it try again and like it's oh it's, it's <laughs> it not just running a preset or syncing the settings inside lightroom it's way more all right so one of the things uh, i kind of struggle with and i think a lot of other str people struggle with uh, and just touched upon upon it is that satisfaction and connection with the photo um, in the end? Is, is there something that you have experienced that makes you connect more with your photos, uh, such as effort walking to the top of Mount Everest to take the best view in the world? Or, or is it more like, you know, uh, not, not, not so much that? Well, what, yeah, how, how do you value that? I would never make it up to Mount Everest, <laughs> not at all. Uh, for me, it was quite demanding to keep up with you and Sophie when we walked up to the Cicheda from Femeda Lodge. Uh, so, um, no, the effort of climbing somewhere or hiking somewhere um, doesn't really correlate with the satisfaction level that I have uh, with my image. Um, it's not that I like my images more because I had to hike up a mountain for 10 hours. Um, I, I, I strive more for the creative part. So if I manage to make a really great photo um, that could even be inside a forest nearby here, um, of course it's great when you scramble up a mountain and you have this epic view, but... Um, and it's more satisfying than just driving up to a parking lot, get out of the car, take five steps and stand in line with all other people. That's uh, not the same feeling. But in the end, when I look at those images, um, it has to be the image that's transporting the emotion and the feeling. And once I get this across, like, again, maybe that's just because it's so still fresh in my mind, this water series, um, those weren't, I hadn't, didn't have to scramble for those shots. We just sat in that boat. You were sitting right next to me or across of me. And um, I was taking those images, but mm, to see something, to discover something inside the chaos, like I said earlier, um, that's satisfying. It's more satisfying than climbing 10 hours. So I'm, I'm more from the creative than the sportive side. Yeah, yeah, it, it, same here. And it's it's so interesting because I am not always sure which of my photos I connect the most with um, when I come back from a tour. And I've also experienced that it changes over the years. As as I change, I see something new in my photography. And and just these days, for some reason, there 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 there's something about the blue hour not the dramatic blue hour but just like the calm blue hour photos that i have that i connect more with now than i did just a year ago i, I can feel that i'm moving a bit away also from the highly dramatic impactful hit you in the face photo and and reaction from from like you know the immediate reaction you get for for a like on on instagram and and well that that's uh it's satisfying for me that i can see that i'm changing 
but it's also a little bit like okay so so how do I deal with all my old photos uh, should I just uh, not post them anymore or should I repost them and all those things it's yeah it's probably a mixture of all but I, I remember a recent video from you um we were in your kitchen in front of your image of the this big tree and I had to smile because I could relate so much um it's probably an image many people would walk by or even flip by on Instagram. Um, but I definitely felt you like, I guess it took you quite a while to frame the shot because you, and to walk just those little inches um, to place your uh, tripod or you do it handheld, I don't know, um, to have all those branches interact with each other and have great lines and the light work. And um, to have this impactful image 99% of the people would just walk by. That's so satisfying. And uh, I would I would hang those shots, or like and I hang my more abstract shots, those are on the wall. The the bigger ones, the, the more epic ones, I haven't hung up any of them. And um, I, I remember my Hanoi shot, I think that was on the cover of a bigger magazine here in, uh, in Germany, I think even Europe, uh, which is a very cool thing. But if I look at that image now, all I see is a big color cast in the snow. And I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't edit it that way anymore. And that kind of takes it away from me from this image. So um, like you say, sometimes with with time, things change and, and you, you don't relate to images that much anymore. And sometimes even old shots that you took years ago, you stumble upon them on your Lightroom catalog or in your um, hard drives and you think, well, that's cool. I've never looked at it that, that way like I do now. And, and let me pick that up and work that out. And um, so it's not being able to travel right now. is, is That sucks, especially with a trip we can't do. But having time to dig through your archives and maybe pick some nuggets up that you didn't pay that much attention before, um, that's a good thing to do. Yeah, it's, it's having that time to actually reflect back on what it is you are doing and not just because I'm working all the time and it's just like new and new and new and new and new. And I have so many photos in, in my old folders, like you, even just like a week ago, I, I found some old shots from my first trip to the Faroe Islands and some shots from Glencoe and, and that shot from Glencoe, I, I really like that one. I just never got around to process it. I completely remember taking that photo and, and I was like, whoa, great light and all those things. But in, in the finished Glencoe video, for some reason, I just didn't get around to it. There were other things that I prioritized. So yeah, going back, take a break, go through your old photos, see what you connect with. That also gives you like a little bit of a, a road to move towards so you don't spend too much time on taking photos that you don't connect with. How do you approach your own images when you get back from a tour? Uh, let's say you have, a, um, you have your SD cards full with, let's say, 1,200 shots. Which are the ones that you pick up the first to edit? It, it's, for me, it's, it's usually those that I know in field that I really like this uh, when I was in field. Uh, and and then I go through it, and then I kind of just leave the other ones behind. But, but that's also because of how my workflow is, because I make my YouTube videos. So even though when I'm on a photo tour, I sometimes come home and have like half a year of of videos from that tour. I at least tried that. So I try to give myself a bit more time to actually edit my photos. But a, a good example was my Brit Britain series. I started making excellent. that one just excellent. as soon as I came home. And I remember that the problem was actually not editing the videos. The problem was editing the photos. That was actually very, it was stressful because I worked on each of those videos, including editing photos and so forth for like four or five days. And that was too much. Like I cannot spend that much time on a video. <clears throat> it just doesn't make sense. I can't make anything else then. So, so, so in that way, like the, the gen, it's a big process and I have to, I think, be better at just saying, okay, I show these two photos and then that's it. Well, do you think that would work with you? You could do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I couldn't either. And it, it's kind of funny. Um, with me, most of the time it's, 
I mean, there's certainly images that you feel right away when you're taking those. You have a smile on your face and you feel like, this one's going to be good. And usually those are the shots that I don't pick up right away. Um, sometimes it's because I know those shots will be good and I want to do it justice with my editing and I want to take extra time to edit them. And sometimes when I pick up my images, it's at the end of the day and I'm maybe a bit tired or something and I don't... I don't feel like I'm going to dig into an edit. For example, that shot from Tenerife, uh, the Anaga Mountains, the forest, this big forest scene is called Come On In. We dive into a uh, moss-covered uh, walkway with those trees hanging inside. Uh, I knew right away that this image I would really like, uh, but I really took my time to edit that one. And from Tenerife, I still have a Milky Way shot lying around waiting for me to pick up. It's a focus stack. I think it's eight shots with a focus stack, a giant bouquet of flowers leading up to a um, big um, rock formation with a really nice Milky Way in the back. And I know it's a shitload of work and I don't want to screw that, screw that image up. So it keeps on lying and waiting for me. <laughs> and I know someday I will pick that up, uh, but it's taken time. Uh, like also that one shot that you all also have because we stood there right next to each other at Drangania with uh, the dramatic sunset, um, there was rain rain in between, r waves came uh, rushing by. Yeah. You made a tutorial out of it. And that shot, I think, it took me half a year to pick that up and, and, and edit that one. Um, sometimes I'm strange with that. So usually when I come back from a tour, I pick up those shots that I really like, but I feel like I don't have to edit much. Those are really fast, quick edits. <laughs> And yeah, um, yeah, yeah. leave I, those I, other I, I ones I for that, some time, like a yeah. wine. <laughs> that's the uh, yeah. That, I guess that's the good thing with not having to depend on actually making money from your photography. So, all right. So uh, let's move on. So, um, as I, I said, we are both on Instagram, and and you are also on, on Instagram, and you're you're kind of like reaching though you are just above 80,000 followers i think now 83 84 something yeah. yeah something like that you don't care anymore because you kind of like not as much as, 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 as i, I did yeah. <laughs> dare I say you destroyed your instagram reach uh, by going a lot into this uh, abstract photography here but uh, your philosophy around it is uh, is i think a very healthy philosophy around it. Can, can you tell a little bit more about that? Because you're definitely not doing it for the reach. No, I, I mean, once in a while, I put up those popular uh, shots too. Because obviously, when, when you when you try to monetize your photography in some way, and of course, I have to do that too, to be able to travel and um, be able to shoot. So um, it would be kind of stupid to say, well, I don't really care about Instagram at all. But um, artistically, it's not in my head. And I think one point for me in time was, I think it's almost exactly two years ago, I just fell completely flat. Uh, before I was watching my numbers and uh, it was like a period of two weeks and I Googled words like shadow ban because I wasn't growing at all, nothing. I mean, the numbers just imploded. Um, and I, and I, didn't, I didn't do anything. I didn't cheat the game or anything. So I didn't know what, uh, why that happened. Um, but it told me it doesn't matter what you do with that pro with that app, and it doesn't really matter what you put out. Uh, there's things outside of your reach, and um, I noticed with putting out images that are more abstract, that are less popular on Instagram, um, that people that really relate to my photography, they still care, and that told me something that. Um, I really, first of all, I really love that community in my Instagram. There's a whole lot of people that actually do care what I'm doing. And uh, this is just, that's amazing. And I, I really love that. Um, and to get feedback from those people, that's really satisfying. And it's way more satisfying than have 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000 clicks or whatever on your image. And um, so that changed. And um I think people that really follow me along and that are not just bots, <laughs> um, they kind of get a feeling of how I tick as a photographer or, and as an artist that I like to mix things up and that I also like this more abstract stuff. And I think uh, they they get along with that. 
uh, kind of like with music. We had that earlier. Um, I mean, there's there's people that like ACDC has has been sounding pretty much the same for I don't know eighty years now. <laughs> and then there's other bands that try to invent themselves with uh, like two do two or three albums that are kind of similar and then change their style, go into a different uh, direction. Also with classic painters, I mean, I remember walking into a uh, museum with Picasso and uh, others. They had their phases uh, where maybe they had a big crisis in their life or maybe a new partner or maybe uh, were starving. And that showed in their images. And those images were kind of different. Also different period of time um, when there was big crisis like we have right now. And I like artists that have some kind of an edge where you can see that they're going through something. And like I said earlier, I like this emotional collection, uh, connection inside my images. So um, it's perfectly fine if the viewer um, connects with the image and kind of reads through it and maybe gets a little hint of how I'm doing at that time. I think that's fine. Yeah, I, I think you completely uh, nailed it there because that's definitely how I feel now that... I am not, when I go out, I don't really aim for making those highly dramatic photos. If it happens and I get some light which is dramatic, of course I catch it and I process it and see how it is, I like it. But the photos I connect with the most are the more calm photos and I also, when it comes to my photography, feel more calm uh, than I have done in a long time and also on myself like i'm stressing a little bit about the youtube algorithm right now but i think there's a lot of like things going on because of the coronavirus uh, but but besides that it's uh, in regard to my photography i feel more relaxed about it than i've done for a long time and i think you can definitely see it in my pursuit of forest photography and my newfound love for photographing in Denmark and and a more I feel more comfortable going out into a boring forest you have to work it you have to work it and and you 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 have to yeah I I don't know I I connect with it and I'm calm in it and and then I try to like you know pursue the atmosphere that I really like, which is atmospheric, a little bit of moody, but I also like, and I can't wait for the trees to bloom. <laughs> uh, I just like, you know, beach uh, forests. One of also my favorite f photos from last year is that little beach tree surrounded by the big beach trees. That's just a completely normal Danish forest where the light comes down through the trees. Uh, and, and backlights the, the, the trees and I just love that I really want to go out and, and get some more of that summer forest-ish photography done in that way you're adapting and that's I mean you're teaching photography and uh, I do too with online trainings and I, I like to tell the people when you're outside adapt to the conditions they're, they're sometimes ever changing uh, and um, I know we, when we started, we all went to those locations with preconceived uh, visions in how an image should look. And then you're there and you might be disappointed. Oh, there's no cloud in the sky or it's a dull sky or whatever. And nowadays, um, it's not that I don't care. I mean, obviously, you, you like dramatic light and, and good light, but um, adapting and then taking different scenes. Um, maybe the big vista you envisioned, it's not happening at that moment. But turn around. All all the other tripods are facing that way. You turn the opposite way, and you see something there. And maybe it's just a spider web that has a great reflection of the last glimpse of light, and you capture that. And um, I th to me, it feels like this is more real photography, because for me, a photographer um, picks scenes and sees things that other people don't really see, at least not at first. And um, I think it's really satisfying to be able to do that. And it takes some some skill to, first of all, see that. And, and then second of all, uh, adapt to those conditions, solve a problem, and then um, get that shot. And I think it's it's evolution. It's evolution, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, it is. You evolved there. And, and I feel yeah. like I have too in that sense. Yeah, and it's 
that's so much fun. I, I mean, there's people that drop out, you know, they, they have taken all those shots and they drop out of photography because it's not fun anymore. And I think the fun has just started. Yeah, yeah. I again, I feel completely the same because I I found a, a new satisfaction in going to new places I've never been before and take photos. I usually scout. Uh, I, I've been out in like five different forests uh, this past week and been out scouting, trying to find something potential because. That is one of the hardest parts when you have to make a YouTube video, which is at the same time also entertaining. And I do want to come away with some photo. Like it, it feels a little bit weird not having at least one photo to show in the end when you have made. Only like Thomas Heason can do block. that. So so yeah, and and that's also because my head is. It's, I think it's working pretty fast when I'm out. Like I analyze the scene. Does this work? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And that is extremely hard to catch on camera. Like if I just put up my camera and put up like, you know, filmed myself for half an hour, people would see how much I'm just yeah. running around. Yeah, yeah. Like I am I not remember. taking, <laughs> you are I am all not over the taking place. things slow. And, and that, that means that I will have to, to make this adjustment all the time, introduce a new scene, introduce new thoughts, like again and again and again and again. And that takes time away from the flow of my own photography. It takes a lot of, um, if I depend on fog in a forest and, and some light beams coming in through the forest, they change so fast. So having to keep adapting all the time and including people and making a storyline and without making it like all over the place, it's so hard. <laughs> I remember that, um, last Sunday I was holding a webinar for an Indian uh, photography uh, club and um, they posed questions to me in advance. So I, I prepared to answer those questions. And of course, uh, like what settings are you using? What's the axis of your images was coming up? And I, I mean, I, I know where those questions come from and, and we probably all started kind of the same. We, we took axis of images we liked and thought we'd get a feeling of how to maybe capture an image uh, um, which could be similar. But like you say, it's um, you, don't, you don't see how much wind there was and you don't see why we as a photographer had to raise the ISO to 800 maybe, which is not optimal, um, just to have that shutter speed so that this damn flower in front of you just doesn't shake or is blurred in the image. So you're adapting and you're solving problems and sometimes you're just damn tired at the end of a trip and you don't really care about the best settings and you just fire it away. And then you still like the image in the end and you think like, ah, if I had a bit more sleep, maybe I would have taken different settings. But then you work it and you feel like it's working still. And um, yeah. so sometimes it just relax and take it as is. And it's more, it's what's the images in the end and not so much the, the tools you use. It's also yeah, another yeah, exactly. subject. What camera are you using? Yeah. What hammer are you using to get the nail into <laughs> yeah. the wall? I don't yeah, care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It Take just doesn't matter what camera you're using. Exactly. Like it's, if, if you have to ask about that, uh, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I think we, we've been talking for almost, well, at least 45 minutes by now. Um, so uh, I think we should... Uh, start uh, finishing off so so what's the future for you kai is are you working on on anything and uh, of course like i will put on your homepage and instagram down in the description of this video but what what's what's the future for you um i would really love to make a book one day <clears throat> um a real one that you have in your hands um uh, but first of all maybe uh do an ebook would be kind of cool I don't have any time frame in mind when this will be uh, happening, but I, I started writing or taking notes for that. So um, that's something I, I would like to do. Also, this uh, serious stuff that I just started, um, it's kind of intriguing and, and I might be doing a couple more because uh, I have uh, several ideas in mind what I can work in. And of course, when we will be able again to travel, I would love to travel more places and hope we can get this trip done that we're, we're planning. Um, yeah. And actually, uh, at the end of September, there's uh, it's right now it's still planned that I'm um, having a little presentation inside a gallery for two weeks, where some images of mine will be um, placed. Um, so that's something that's pretty intriguing for me too. And um, so that yeah, that's probably the more concrete 
plans. And other than that, just keep enjoying photography, keep growing as an artist, and um, see where it can go from there. Awesome. All right. So uh, I want to say thank you for to people for watching. I hope you enjoyed it uh, and that, that we took it a little bit out of this uh, metaphor with uh, music and other approach to creativity. And uh, if you have anything, uh, any thoughts you want to share, there's a down in the description. And uh, again, Kai, I want to say thank you so much for being part of this for the second time. Uh, <laughs> I, ho I hope we don't need a third time now. <laughs> no, 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 well, I mean, no. Of course, if fingers. sometime I, I'm always open for for that, but uh, not to re-record. I, yes, I yes. Apologize. <laughs> it's okay. It's so <laughs> fine. We just talk twice. Okay. So yeah, uh, as nice. always, I would uh, yeah highly appreciate a comment, as I said, and a like, and uh, yeah, see you in the next video.